Hey guys, what is going on? This is NGS and welcome back to VEDA. VEDA stands for Vlog Every Day in April and we are on day 22. So since it's been really nice the past couple of days, well, more nice than bad, considering it's spring and we do get a lot of rain, I decided to record another video outside. It's actually pretty good, 60 degrees and sunny. And the funny thing is, even though it's 60 degrees, I don't know why, it just feels like it's in the high 70s for whatever reason. Um, so before I get on to this video, I might as well just do it because I have it. I have a package to unbox for you guys today. Um, this was a spontaneous buy. It was something that, um, the thing with me when ordering stuff is I'm, I've been saving my money over the past couple months, so I really haven't been buying too much stuff that I know I'm not gonna get to. Uh, however, if I see something under $20, which is usually the extent that I would go to purchase something, um, I'm definitely gonna snag it if it's something I wanted. And I picked up this. This was actually on sale for uh, $9.99 on Best Buy as well as Amazon. Um, but I decided to buy it on Best Buy since I have Gamers Club Unlocked. It is a video game. And it is The Wolf Among Us for the PlayStation Vita. Now, you guys know I've already played The Wolf Among Us. I own it on PC. Um, but I had been wanting to play it again on another console only because I guess I wanted to go for trophies or something. I don't know, I'm not too much of a trophy whore, but I just saw this on sale and considering I guess they're clearing out their Vita selection, <clears throat> which is understandable. Um, it was on sale, I had Gamers Club Unlocked, it took off a couple bucks, and I had a $5 coupon. So all in all, I only spent $3 on this game, which is awesome considering I bought the game last year uh, for a really cheap price on PC and now I have it again on Vita. And like with the other um, Telltale game I have, The Walking Dead for PlayStation Vita, that it came with my Vita, um, I assume this is gonna have performance issues up the wazoo, but for three bucks getting a game that I really, really, really did enjoy, um, I guess I'll take the hit in quality. If I had paid full price for this, then hell no, but The Wolf Among Us for PS Vita. If you haven't played the game, I definitely recommend it, but play it on something like, uh, I guess, PS4, Xbox One, uh, PC. So for today's video, I kind of teased what I was going to discuss in the, uh, I, I guess it was the, not the last one, but a couple days ago I teased that I was going to be giving you guys my impressions on the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. This is the Note 4 right here. I've had this phone for about a month now and I just felt like, since I don't do a lot of phone videos on YouTube, obviously that's not my forte. Um, I, I just did want to talk about having this phone for a while because having this phone, it, it's a big step for me uh, considering when it comes to phones, I was never really too big of a, how I say this, I'm just going to give you guys my history lesson. When it came to phones, I was never at the forefront of technology, if that makes sense. Uh, I remember back in the days when cell phones started to get really, really big and popular, uh, the really first big mainstream one was the Motorola Razr. I never had a Razr. Um, it took forever for me to convince my parents so I could get a phone. I finally got one when I was uh, 13 in seventh grade or sixth grade, one of the two. Um, and I got like this little flip singular phone. I don't even remember the brand, it might have been Samsung, but it was a little flip phone. It had a little mirror on the front that lit up whenever you got like a text message or just an LED notification. Um, and then from there I've had other flip phones, but the first smartphone that I had was the Samsung Infuse, and that was in 2011. I'd gotten it for my uh, 18th birthday. And I was using that phone for about a year, year and a half, before it decided to crap out on me. Yeah, um, Android back in the day was not the most stable operating system. Uh, they were definitely working out a lot of kinks. Um, it was not unified across the board like it is now. And Samsung is notable for their bloatware operating system, uh, the TouchWiz. Um, that they put on all their devices and that combined with the fact that it wasn't the most powerful smartphone out It was just a match made in hell uh, So that phone was giving me performance issues when it really shouldn't have been I wasn't getting the updates that I was supposed to uh, It would constantly have battery problems and it, it was just not something that I needed in a phone, especially when I just wanted to call people. I suddenly have 100% battery and then it goes to 50% and just all kinds of things that were really getting on my nerves. Um, so after that, and the phone was just basically kaput, I switched over to an iPhone. I had an iPhone 4 from, uh, it's about around the same around, the, the fun thing I know is with phones, I don't have them for like 
two years, something like that. Something always happens where I get a new phone, be it it breaks down or someone's contract happens to be up and I can use their uh, um, eligibility if they don't want it. Uh, so that's what happened. Uh, my iPhone 4 that I had was running strong in 2013 up until the end of 2014 where I dropped it and there was an internal crack on the screen. So after that, um, a friend was very generous enough to loan me his iPhone 5 while I waited till my new contract to, was up, which was honestly only a couple of more months. Uh, so I was using an iPhone 5 from fall 2014 up until March of, uh, well, last month. And yeah, I switched over to the Note 4. So as you can see, I started off with just the basic phones. Then I made my first transition with the Samsung Infuse, went to two iPhones, and they were both not the most recent one. So this is my most up-to-date smartphone. And I gotta say that, wow, Samsung really has improved a lot in the past couple of years of me not using that device. Um, a lot of the things that I really had a concern with and I drew issue with Samsung devices, that is not a case with the Note 4. First and foremost, TouchWiz, a lot less intrusive, a lot less, not like it was before. It was not so resource hoggy, it took up a lot of things that it shouldn't have. It is basically, I'm not going to say it's the next thing to the stock experience, but if there was like stock Android, then something like HTC Sense, and then it'd probably be TouchWiz up there. Um, it's not my favorite thing overall, but it's definitely a lot better than before. And another thing I really want to note on is how powerful this phone is. By God, this is one of the most powerful phones I have ever used. Uh, as far as gaming wise, it's fantastic. As far as watching videos and multitasking, and this phone is basically unparalleled, you know, with stuff that's on the market right now. Obviously, new phones come out and they, you know, dwarf them by comparison. But one of the main things I got to focus on is the screen size of this phone. As you guys can see, this is a massive phone above five inches. And I love it. It's great for me as a person who, I, I, I don't have a big palm, but I have long fingers. So I'm able to go through more real estate than the standard person on the screen. And this thing just, it took a while to get used to, like a good day. But after that, I just felt right at home. And honestly, I can't go back to anything smaller. I was helping my mom transfer stuff from her old iPhone to a Galaxy S5 and just inputting the stuff into iCloud was just so tiny. It felt like I was using a toy. Um, so the screen size is a real benefit to me and it's also very beautiful. It's very vibrant, it's colorful and it's rocking a 1440p display above 1080p. So to put that in perspective, this thing has a higher resolution than my monitor. This thing can shoot 4K video. That is higher than any camera that I have right now. 4K video, that is just phenomenal. And it's it's not just like that bullshit, like, oh yeah, well it's 4K, but really not really. No, you can definitely see the difference in quality. And I uploaded a video onto YouTube and some people were even saying that, wow, it definitely does look different. What's going on, man? So what I'm gonna start to do is record more outdoors videos so you guys can get a full taste of the quality. But in addition to 4K video, um, it also includes 1080p recording, obviously, 720p recording, uh, 1440p recording, and 1080p um, high frame rate, which is it means it's able to record at 60 frames per second, so that really smooth, buttery feeling that you'd be seeing on certain videos, it can do that. And that was just phenomenal to me. Um, the only issue that I really have with the camera is that being a person who's used iPhones for so many years, I've become so accustomed to the quality of their camera and their sensors. Um, while this thing has higher megapixel count than my iPhone 4 and iPhone 5 did, um, the quality of pictures really, it just varies, hit or misses. For a lot of outdoor photos, I can get great shots, but if I'm doing a lot of indoor stuff, it just does not stack up to like the iPhone 4 I had for whatever reason. Um, but I will take the better video quality and features that I get out of this phone over the iPhone. Um, the only issue I have is I do I did do a lot of FaceTiming with friends and stuff, so we used front-facing camera a lot. Um, this front-facing camera is not really good for pictures. It's great for video. As you guys have seen the VEDA videos I uploaded, those are all from the front-facing camera. But for actual photos and stuff, it just mm, it's hit or miss depending on the situation. But the camera is phenomenal, it's exceptional. I've been using this to record video, so obviously it's something that I really do like using. And the phone itself is just a beast. As far as performance goes, it promotes multitasking. Like since the screen size is so big, you can actually have multiple apps running at the same time. 
Uh, so I could have a YouTube video playing that's like a tutorial of how to do something from my uh, business class and I could be writing down notes at the same time. It's insanely cool that you don't have to have two separate screens like your tablet is doing one thing and then you're writing down the notes. You can get everything done on one. So as far as multitasking goes, it's fantastic. I haven't really experienced any slowdowns in that respect. So that's great. Um, and the phone, it has a lot of RAM, so it's able to do a lot of that stuff. And it's definitely a big upgrade from the Samsung Infuse I had. Um, that was more of like a mid-range Android phone. That was like the best that AT&T had at the time for Android. Um, but this is just right up there with the greats. It's definitely one of my uh, most favorite phones that I've been using. And it also comes with a stylus that so you're able to do a lot of on-screen stuff. You're able to make... Um, um, precise screenshots with this you can capture just certain parts of the screen you're able to write on the screen quickly compose text messages a lot of things have improved in Android from the years that I haven't used them on a phone I mean I have a Google Nexus 7 tablet the 2013 edition and I noticed a lot of the improvements there you know be it a stock experience you always get the updates that was awesome but you know that was just a tablet I didn't use that outside of just you know commenting on Facebook statuses and watching YouTube and Netflix with this as my daily driver you Using it every single day you definitely notice how Samsung and Android have stepped their game up and I I love it I really do it's just so fast and snappy and um, I'm definitely going to be tinkering around with the phone a lot because on Android you can do that you can mess around with the settings and get the phone to run at a certain speed that you want but I've been running it at the stock experience I mean I removed bloatware and some of the other more annoying apps on here but as far as like the experience goes, it's just been stock and it hasn't really been giving me any problems. The only issues I have is that certain apps would force close, but that is like a once every like 10 times I use the app. So definitely a huge difference from my last phone and even my iPhones, they started to crap out on me after a while. And the battery is insanely good too. Like I can get a full day's use of you, you full day's use out of this and that's with running the screen at like the the best quality setting that's what brightness midway well it's actually on auto so it adjusts wherever you go um, so I could start the day at 100% when I come home it'll be like probably 20% 15% which is insanely good considering what's under the hood and how much stuff I do on a regular basis I completely am in love with it um, so yeah, the Samsung Galaxy Note 4 is a phone that I recommend to a lot of people. Uh, if you want to check out my background, I don't know if you can see that, but it's Spider-Man and Daredevil, of course, my favorite duo, next to Spidey and Captain America. Um, I would recommend this phone to a lot of people who are looking for a really great Android smartphone on the bigger side. I'm not going to say that this is too big and you can't use it because I fit this in my pocket on a daily basis. It doesn't squeeze. I don't have to squeeze it in. It's not tight and it's easy for me to type on it. Um, I know they have like the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus uh, and they have some other stuff on the Windows side of things. But as far as Android goes, the, I think this is one of the best ones out right now along with um, I guess the HTC One M series in addition to I guess the new Galaxy S6 is finally showing that Samsung understands things I guess but then again I've heard some things about that um, but yeah I definitely recommend this for people who want a great Android smartphone on the bigger size of things it's great for media use great for devouring a lot of content watch so many episodes of Netflix <laughs> episodes of Netflix so many episodes on Netflix using this phone and I just love it. it it's just so freaking good and I've got this really awesome case too that actually has as you can see and you open it up it's insanely cool props to uh, Dante86 for sending me he actually has a note for as well he was one of the main reasons that I got the phone and he doesn't like this case so he said you know what dude here you can have it so shout out to Dante86 for hooking it up and yeah you guys that was my impressions on the um, Galaxy Note 4 definitely a fantastic smartphone and I'm, I'm definitely gonna look into the Note series if they do continue it with the Note 5 and the Note 6 I'm on the AT&T Next program so I can upgrade whenever I want for the next two years um, so if the Note 5 is a good inter a good upgrade then I'm gonna switch over to that but more often than not I like to upgrade every year and a half so probably I'll wait for the Note 6 or something like that um, but yeah cannot recommend this phone higher like the recommendation is just through the roof right now Anyway, for me for now, I'm a GS signing out. Like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace.